Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you why you might not need to use interfaces at least as much as you're currently using them in C Sharp from C Sharp 12 and .NET 8. Now, this is all based on a feature that might be coming and it will be in preview if it does come in C Sharp 12, but you have to get familiar with it and that is interceptors. Now, I already have a video on interceptors going in depth into what they are. Here we're going to see a practical potential use case that eliminates the need for interfaces in some scenarios. It is of my opinion that interfaces are one of the most abused C Sharp features. Not everything needs a goddamn interface and in this video we'll explain when it makes sense, when it doesn't make sense, and how to get around the problem that removing interfaces actually will introduce. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. All right, let me show you what I have here. I have this Movies API over here, which has a Movies controller high level, and this would be the same, by the way, if we're using minimal APIs. And then it has some stuff to create a movie, delete a movie, just your basic CRUD API. And it has a service layer that uses a repository and a validator to validate the different actions, so creation, update, and so on. And then the repository to call the database to make all the actions. And if we take a look here, you're going to see all the database code in the repository. Now, why do I say that interfaces are one of the most abused features in C Sharp? Well, we have a bit of a problem. Ever since dependency injection was introduced as a fundamental feature of C Sharp, we assume that absolutely everything needs to have an interface because absolutely everything might need to be mocked. And that is not the case C Sharp 12 or 10 or 11 or whatever other version. Not everything needs an interface. Not everything needs to be injected. You should not be afraid of static things. The real problem with static things is that you won't be able to mock it, but do you need to mock it is the real question. And in most cases you don't, unless you go into the wire, IO, network, and so on, or even date and time, you probably don't need to be able to mock that thing or inject it even. Yes, there is an argument to be made that something that needs to fulfill sort of a contract and potentially be replaced with a different implementation might be useful, but in my experience, even for repositories that use a certain type of database, let's say you use a Postgres database or an SQLite database, and eventually you want to move into something like a Cosmos DB or a DynamoDB, the interface will change because your access patterns will change because that's how different those technologies are. Are. So rarely do you get to actually follow the rule that, okay, this is a contract and I'm able to replace what's in that contract with a different implementation. But the real argument to be made is that if you actually want to go ahead and write some tests, for example, here for this movie service, well, if you're not injecting an abstract class or an interface, you're not really able to mock those different operations. And the moment you try to do something like create the movie, it will actually try to create the real movie in the real database and that will throw an exception, causing your test to fail. However, as you can see over here, I'm using a movie repository, not an interface, and this is not an abstract class, this is just the class. I'm still injecting it, I could not inject it if I wanted to, by the way, I could just turn everything into static and everything in this video would be still true, but I'm still injecting them because I want to control things like the lifetime, in this case it is singleton, but it could be transient or scope as well, and the iValidator, it's just something that fully validation is using and I don't want to remove that. So basically, if you want to write unit tests for something like this over here and mock the create async and also in the validator, the get by slug async, well, you wouldn't because that's a concrete implementation. It is not an interface. It's not an abstraction. So how does C Sharp 12 make that possible? Well, it makes it possible with the concept of interceptors. Now, I do have a video on interceptors. I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check that first, but I will briefly explain how they work in this video too. So you know what? Let's go ahead and write a couple of tests for this create method in this movie service that calls the repository, which is not mockable over here. And I am not using, as you're going to see here in the CS proj, any sort of mocking framework, just fluent assertions, XUnit, and that is it. So no mocking capabilities in here. And even if I was using it, I wouldn't be able to because I'm injecting the implementation. So I'm going to say private read only movie service, and I'm going to call that SUT or system under test, basically the main thing that's being tested in this class. And first I'm going to inject the movie validator because that's the first thing I need, but the repository will be null actually. And then I'm also going to inject a null repository here. So by all means, this should not work. Let's go ahead and write the test. So I'm going to have my arrange act assert. I'm going to add the movie I want to create. So I'm going to create the classic Nick the Greek that came out this year. Then I'm going to say that I want to create that movie. So created movies here. And all that is done by going through the create method of that system under test. And then in the end, I'm going to say that created movie is success should be true. And I'm also going to validate that the movie object coming in matches the object that that service will return, validating that it was successfully created. Now, because I'm using a result type, I have to match it. And this is where the assertion is actually happening. This is an unreachable exception. And actually, 
I could use an unreachable exception to represent it as well. This was added in .NET 7, I think. Now, if I go ahead and run this test, as you might expect, the test will actually just fail straight away. Null exception will try to do things. Uh, in fact, it's going to go into the validator. It will try to call this. And because the repository is null, it is not going to do anything. And this is normally where in the arrange method, you would have sort of your mock object. And you're going to say, if you reach that line over here, then return in our case null, because null means the movie does not exist and it's going to go ahead and create the movie successfully. But I'm not going to use mock, I'm going to use interceptors. Now, I want to make something clear. This is as much a demonstration as much as it is a call to action. If you think what I'm going to showcase right now is cool, then I do really believe that the next big thing in mocking and testing is interceptors for mocking. And that will be done through source generators. Now, I'm not smart enough or do I have the time to do that. But if you have the time to investigate this and you want to have a very popular NuGet package, then this is, in my opinion, the future of testing for many scenarios because not everyone is able to re-architect their code base to be able to do proper unit testing. And doing it that way will really, really help them. So how do I use interceptors? Well, in the main project, and I want to explain later why this is the case, but in the main project, I'm going to create a class called generated code. Now, anything I'm going to put in this class, assume that it is source generated. I just don't want to have to spend the time to write a source generator because that will be really time consuming. But assume everything is here is either code generated or source generated. So what do I want to mock? I want to say that when you reach this line over here, this movie repository and get by slug async, then please return null. Now, the way interceptors work is pretty interesting. I'm going to go and create a public static and the return type will be the return type of this method over here. So a task of a nullable movie. So I'm going to say task of nullable movie over here. Let's go ahead and import that. And I'm going to say mock get by slug async. Now this needs to be an extension method on whatever I'm going to call in that class. So I'm going to call the movie repository. So this will be a movie repository extension method. I also need to have a parameter that matches the parameter accepted in here. In this case, the slug. So I'm going to say string slug over here. And I have my method. Now, since all I want for this is to actually return null, what I can say is return task from result over here, say null, and then specify the type because it won't understand what type of null I want. So nullable movie. And that is it. And how do I introduce the mocking? How do I actually wire everything up? I'm using the intercepts location attribute and I point to the physical location of the file I want to intercept. So this one over here, the movie validation over here. So I'm going to right click here, say copy path reference, copy absolute path, and then just paste it here. If this looks clunky, that's because it is not meant to actually be written by a human. It's meant to be written by code that reads your code and writes this class. So then I need the line and I need the character location. And I can actually get that in my ID over here. So I want to point not on the dot, but after the dot of the thing I want to intercept or mock in our case. So down here it says 28, so line 28 and then 52, character 52. So I'm going to say 28 and 50. And that is it. And now what I'm going to do, because in order for my test to pass, the second thing over here in this create method needs to also be mocked. Otherwise, this will throw an exception. I'm going to do the same for the create async method. Here, it doesn't really matter because I'm not really using the result of it. Yes, it returns true or false, and I will wire it up to return true, but it won't really change how we do things. So in the same fashion, mock create async, point to the file, we have the line, we have the character, we inject the repository and the movie as well, and we return true. Obviously, in here, if you need to do more complex work for your mocking, that's where you do it. But in my case, I don't really have to do anything complicated. And now watch what happens. I'm going to stick breakpoints here, and then I'm going to go back to the movie service and debug this test. So I'm going to say debug it. So my code is running. I'm creating my movie object. I'm going to step into that SUT. I'm going to go to the validate async method, and this is where I'm intercepting. So when I step into validate async, even though I have my null repository over here, as you can see, when I step into the validator, I'm actually calling that interceptor. We're not calling the real code and that code will return null as we expect. Then the movie does not exist because the existing movie is null, of course. And then we step out of this, the validation succeeded. And again, null movie repository, but we intercept. So step into that, say true, and our test is passing success. And that's because it's falling in here. It did match it 
and it did succeed. I know this is a very trippy concept to understand, but we did not need to traditionally mock anything. We're just intercepting those actions. So anything in that code will be interceptable. Let's take a look at the same thing, but assuming that the validation error would occur instead of successfully creating the movie. So I'm going to paste the test because there's no point in me saying writing this. I do have already a course on testing if you want to master that topic. So what I'm doing here is I have a movie over here and then I say, hey, if this movie already exists in the system, then throw an appropriate error message instead of success. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this new movie over here, copy it and then go to generated code, comment this out and say return new movie over here. Why don't you like this or you don't like this because you want this to be task from result because you are a task of movie, not just a straight movie. And you also throw a warning because this needs to be nullable. Fine. So now by changing that, what's going to happen is that I'm going to go ahead and run that test over here and just quickly debug it as well. So stick a breakpoint here, debug the test, then step over this, step into create, validate async. Now this is supposed to exist. So I'm going to return a real movie. It's going to say existing movie is not null. And that is true. So a movie does exist. Do the IDs match? They do match. Well, then the movie does exist. And I'm going to say validation error. And the error is this movie already exists in the system. So when the time comes to validate, it's going to validate that. And that is it. Now, that is pretty goddamn cool. And that's a very valid use case for interceptors. It's not the original use case, but it's a very valid one in my opinion. However, there are some things that need to be ironed out. First, that sort of code ideally needs to be generated on a test per test basis, which is very, very tricky to do, because if it doesn't, then which one will be used for each test? There's many things you can mock on the exact same line of code, so you need some sort of flexibility. Then what will the interface for mocking look like? Because Presumably, you're going to have some code here that does the mocking. So that experience needs to feel the same. And then this line will be read and drop that code into the main assembly. Because the other point is that for interceptors to work, they need to exist in the main assembly, which makes it very tricky because then which thing references what in the sequence of references? The test project refers to the main project but then it needs to be able to drop something into them. So I think there's going to have to be a workaround to make that even possible. But other than that, even if you don't have interfaces, you have static code and you want to replace something during execution of your tests, you could theoretically do that with interceptors. And I'm making this video because, yeah, I want to show you something cool that you can do, but I also want one of you to really get inspired and investigate this and see if it's even possible, because I would love to use something like this, especially in legacy code bases that you can't go ahead and just re-architect everything, but you still want to have some unit testing. This can be a lifesaver. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And what do you think about interceptors in general? The initial feedback was a bit negative, but I do think they have some very, very valid use cases. Well, leave a comment down below and do let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.